The American film industry is finding itself at this moment under pressures it has not experienced before. Certain challenges for viewers like Netflix and Amazon also coming out of the coronavirus. Film goers have been very slow to return to movie theaters. It's possible they may never ever return to movie theaters in the numbers they did before. Hollywood executives cannot be blamed for failing to anticipate certain trends that would hit their industry. What they can certainly be held accountable for is if they could not get the Chinese to stop pirating their videos, how did they expect to control a totalitarian regime that it gave a piece of their business to? The economic pressures on Hollywood's business model make access to the Chinese market even more important. In 2019, before the pandemic, U.S. box office receipts were $11.4 billion to China's $9.2 billion. In 2020, for the first time, China's box office receipts eclipsed America's by nearly $1 billion. The trend is clear. China, because of its sheer size, is poised to become the dominant market for Hollywood films. Those pressures increasingly compel American film executives to bend to China's whims. For example, Beijing imposes a quota on foreign films showing in China to 34 foreign films a year. And even that number hasn't been static. Over the last 30 years, the number has shifted upward. But that won't always necessarily be the case. And even more worrisome, the films that are allowed in each year are chosen by the CCP according to its own internal standards of quality and messaging. At any moment, China can reject any and every movie it deems unacceptable to CCP interests. And as the Chinese film industry becomes more accomplished, it appears that the increase in Chinese original fare may add further to the pressures on Hollywood to make films that satisfy CCP elites. An excellent example of how much Hollywood executives fear Chinese Communist Party elites that they might keep their productions out of the Chinese market is Mulan when Disney executives shot parts of the film in regions known for their human rights abuses against the Uyghurs. The crimes taking place against Uyghurs and other Muslim minorities are horrific in their scope and severity. The House Foreign Affairs Committee has heard harrowing accounts from survivors of mass internment, forced labor, torture, political indoctrination, suppression of religious practices, family separation, sexual abuse, and other inhumane practices. And then executives thanked the propaganda ministers from these particular regions. But look, it's not just the Hollywood executives, it's also the well-known celebrities. And that's part of the point, to compel the celebrities to message on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party elites. In an interview with Taiwanese media, John Cena said that Taiwan was the first country to view F9, the latest installment in the Fast and Furious franchise. Soon after, Cena appeared on social media to apologize to the Chinese public as well as the Chinese Communist Party for referring to Taiwan as a real country, which it is, by the way. Uh uh, 
，对不起，对不起，我很抱歉，你必须了解，呃，我很爱，很尊重中国跟中国人。The Chinese like using celebrities like Cena. Because that's an important part of their messaging campaign, an important way to show that they've turned American elites to work on their behalf. We see this happening all the time now. Perhaps the most famous is regarding Top Gun 2, perhaps the most anticipated sequel in Hollywood history. Paramount teamed with Tencent. The Chinese tech giant to produce Top Gun 2, and the story is is that Tom Cruise's iconic bomber jacket from the movie was changed. They removed patches from Taiwan and Japan, both sensitive issues for the Chinese Communist Party, and they made these sensitive issues for Hollywood. Another instance was in the 2011 remake of Red Dawn, the new version of John Milius's 1984 classic. Of teenagers fighting off a communist invasion, in Milius's original, the invading and occupying troops were Soviet and Cuban. In the 2011 remake, there were to be Chinese troops as the occupiers, but the producers were led to believe that if the Chinese were portrayed as the aggressors, Red Dawn 2 would not have access to the Chinese market. And so, after the movie was shot, they spent a million dollars in digital effects. Changing the invading and occupying army from the Chinese to the North Koreans. Now compare that to the 2021 Chinese-made mega hit about a famous Korean war battle in which patriotic Chinese soldiers take on the evil American invaders. The Chinese are hardly shy about making themselves the heroes and Americans the villains. Ironically, the Chinese are taking a page from Hollywood's old playbook. For years, Hollywood furnished. Propaganda for various American efforts, including during World War II, when Disney was used to promote American values. Housewives of America, one of the most important things you can do is to save your waste kitchen fats, bacon grease, meat drippings, frying fats. We and our allies need millions of pounds of fats to help win the war. <laughs> for fats make glycerin, and glycerin makes explosives. Every year, two billion pounds of waste kitchen fats are thrown away. The Chinese, of course, as inheritors of a 5,000-year-old civilization, also understand how to use propaganda. At a 2013 U.S.-China film summit in Los Angeles, a Chinese film executive, Chang Chun, told American film producers, "We want to share our audience with you." The condition was. We want you to promote positive Chinese images, not just one or two shots of China, but to promote generally positive Chinese images. The problem with promoting positive images of China is not about Chinese people per se, or about Chinese landscapes as such. It's about promoting Chinese Communist Party interests, and thereby covering up for what the CCP has done. How it has visited its depredations against Chinese people, but China's propaganda campaign isn't only about pushing messaging that reflects positively on China. There's another aspect to China's propaganda campaign as well. I call that punitive propaganda, where the purpose is to highlight that China is better. Than its Western rivals, better than Western liberalism, the standard bearer of which is the United States. This is tied into core Chinese Communist Party interests, as expressed by Chinese President Xi Jinping, who in 2013 released an important internal document known as Communique Number、no. Nine. The document was addressed to party cadres, warning them about the fundamental conflict between Communist Party ideology and Western liberalism.